Welcome to Rio's Tying the Fly. I'm Britta Fordyce, and today I'm going to be tying a dubbing loop leech for you. To start with, I have a 6x long streamer hook. This is, um, this is a size 6, but you really could get away with using anything from a size 6 to a 10 if you'd like. I have some red thread in 140 denier. And I'm going to start right behind the eye of the hook here. And I'm going to wrap carefully the entire shank of this hook. Now remember, you want to make sure that you don't see any hook shank through the thread. If you don't do a good job of wrapping the hook shank, you're going to end up with materials that slide and want to pull out on you. So it's really important and key to get that solid base of thread down. I'm going to stop my thread right directly between the point of the hook and the barb. Now I'm going to cut off the excess. The first material I'm going to be using to tie in is a piece of marabou. What I want to do to start with is to pull off those sticky weird ends on the bottom of it. It's usually the stuff that flies all over while you're tying the rest of the fly. Now I'm left with this nice feather. I want to pinch it at the top and manipulate it by pulling down. This releases all those fibers that are sticking out the sides. Then I'm going to take about halfway up my, the spine of the feather, pinch with my thumb and forefinger, and rip off that top of it. What that does is it allows when I manipulate and push back the fibers of the feather to where I pinched it, it gives me a perfect fluffy even end of a feather. And this makes for the perfect tail for a leech pattern. To find out how long I want to make it, I generally hold it up with my thumb and forefinger right at the eye of the hook because I want it about an inch and a half long. Um, or usually you could gauge it by doing it one and a half times the length of the hook shank. So this is a little bit longer, but I'll go back at the end and I'll, I'll trim it up to the right size. So now what I do is I take my thumb and forefinger and place it right over where my thread was stopped. And then I transfer hands to my other hand. You want to make sure you're holding it right on top of that hook shank. I wrap over, tightening on that upturn. Do a few wraps, then do the pull test to make sure it's not going anywhere. And that's not. Now what I can do is go in here, careful not to cut your thread. And I'm going to go ahead and cut off that excess. Then I'm going to wrap over that. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's just to kind of tame it. All right. Next up is going to be the dubbing. The dubbing that you use, you want to make sure is longer hanked pieces or longer fiber pieces that are about an inch to an inch and a half long if you could find it. Uh, a lot of times it'll be described as shaggy or uh, seal style dubbing and those tend to have longer fibers to them. Uh, anything that has a hint of flash to it is always fun, but you can also go with just natural colors like a possum or squirrel too. So to start with, I'm going to take my dubbing and to prep it, I'm going to sort of hand stack it or pull it apart by pinching with my thumb and first two fingers here. Makes the long fibers stand out and stacked on top of each other. Then I'm going to create my dubbing loop. To form a dubbing loop, you want to pull your thread out. I'm going to cradle with my forefinger and my left hand my thread. You want it about six, seven inches long or so, but <laughs> Don't trust me on that one because I'm really bad at length and distance. And I'm going to take my thread and then wrap back up and over and wrap back to where I stopped my thread or started my dubbing loop here. And if I did this right, it will create and form a little V right here by the hook shank. So now it frees up your right hand to go ahead and take that thread and wrap up to just behind the eye of the hook and stop it. And now I can pick up my dubbing. The dubbing that you want to work with, it's all nice and stacked as we did that before. You want to make sure that you go along the less is more technique where it's just a tiny bit. If you have too much or a big clump of it, it ends up making it really bulky. It absorbs too much water and makes it heavier to cast and harder to sink. So I want to thread it right in between those two pieces of thread and push it up towards the hook shank. Take another small clump, do the same, and I'm just stacking them in right back to back there, all the way up 
the thread. So I go all the way to there. Once I've gotten it to that point, I'm going to take my dubbing whirler, which has two little hooks on it, and I'm going to hook the bottom piece of thread. The hardest part is pulling your finger out, so you have to be real careful. And luckily nothing, nothing decided to jump out there, so all that dubbing is still left in there. I can take my thumb and forefinger and pinch that thread to hold them together, and now spin it. And as that spins and starts to accordion up, then it's ready to go. So now I hold on tight with my right hand, let go with my left hand, thumb and forefinger, and did a nice little spin job there. Got a little bit of a clumpy bit at the back, so I kind of pinched that off. Now what you want to do is you want to wrap the shank of this hook all the way up to the eye of the fly. You want to make sure that you don't overlap any of it because then you end up with a lumpy bumpy leech and that's not something trout wants to eat. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap, oh, starting all the way from the back here, all the way up to the front. As you're wrapping this, you want to make sure again that you don't overlap any of them. And it's okay if there's a little bit of red that shows through. Those fish really, really like that attractive red color and it, if anything, helps I think to attract more fish when they can see a little bit of that red coming through. So I'm going to wrap and once I get right to where I stop my thread here, what I'll do so I'm going to go ahead and take my thread and wrap around on the underneath side of the dubbing loop piece. Now I could wrap over the shank and it's completely locked that dubbing loop in. I cut off that tag end. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple wraps more with my thread before I pick up my whip finisher. I'm going to take my whip finisher now, pull out a little bit more thread hook it up towards me. And I like to do two sets of whip finishing. I know some people don't think it's necessary. I think it's more of a, it's a personal preference to me. There you go. So that's the second one. Once I've gotten to there, go ahead and cut off this excess. Now the last step I'm going to tell you about is we're going to fix our marabou. Remember how I said that it was a little bit longer than I wanted? You don't ever want to cut marabou. If you cut the tail of marabou, it ends up making it a chopped, unrealistic, non-natural looking leech, and it's a blunt end. So what I like to do is take this and find out where I want to get cut off the ends. I want it about there. So I take my thumb and forefinger and pinch it, tear off the ends with my left hand, and that gives it a much more realistic taper and end. And now it leaves me to go back through in the final step, and that is picking out this dubbing a little bit. You always want to make sure you go horizontal, horizontal to the hook shank because that way you won't cut that thread on accident, which I've done a lot of times before. You just want to gently go in there with a bodkin and pick out those fibers that are kind of tucked in a little bit from spinning it and wrapping it. Kind of manipulate them, tease them back. And now you have the perfect lightweight dubbing loop leech to fish in any lake of your choice. And thanks for watching another Rio's Tying the Fly.